Hey everyone, just brought my toboggan up with some of my bedding. I have one more load I have to make. We are back again today at the truck camp. There's probably a good, maybe condensed 18 inches of snow up there. I know this area in the past couple weeks got to over two feet of snow, but a couple warm days has caused it to melt a lot. And with that has come some concerns for this truck. I just want to show you what's happening with it. We're going to stay in here tonight. Right now it's about 15 degrees. Not that cold out, but tonight we're supposed to get down near negative 20. Tonight is one of the coldest nights we'll probably have all year. Then tomorrow night it's going to be like negative 30. And that might be the coldest night we get all year. Last year we only got a couple days that got down to negative 30. But tomorrow night, I want to go back to the house and I want to make some videos of spraying boiling water out of the hot water heater outside. It just vaporizes when you bring the hot water hose outside. I usually just disconnect the washing machine and that's where I hook up the hose so I can just keep retracting it back into the house without it freezing. So here's one issue I ran into. A lot of people were going to say to me that this roof was going to blow off. It didn't. In fact, we had so many trees come down around this truck. Let me show you. See, this tree recently came down, and I cut that up into firewood. Thankfully, it was dead. So that'll be a lot of good firewood for us in the next um, couple years out here. Got a lot more dead trees that we can just take down for firewood for this place there are a lot of other trees that fell down on this property. There was like 60 mile an hour winds. You can even see some crooked and stuck in other trees. Now, this survived it. People didn't think this roof was going to be able to survive those massive winds. And when that storm happened, there was zero snow on it. There's cinder blocks holding this. Each piece of roofing, you see, is from here to here. It's only about two feet. Each one has a cinder block on each side of it. People thought that that with the combined weight of the snow could also crush the truck. But the cinder block's right on the edge, so it's pushing down on the walls, not the roof. But this roofing structure has a whole new set of concerns I'm going to show you inside. And we will correct that in the spring when the snow melts and it's nice and warm out. This door is always tricky. It's been like that as long as I can remember. Just gotta get in here and push it so hard. Got it open. Haven't been in here in about a month and uh, surprisingly there's still peanut butter. Maybe it's too cold for the mice to smell it. And I removed most of my other stuff in here, but I'm bringing most of it right back in here for tonight. So here's what's going on. Now, I have no idea if this truck does this every year, but if you can see, the little beams here are sagging. And when I built the metal roof on top of this, I put a metal rod in the middle of it to give it a slight uh, slope to each side so the snow and the rainwater can shed off it. But it appears that that's putting too much weight on the center of this and you see the way it's kind of buckling. So in, in the spring, as soon as spring comes along, I don't think this will collapse. I do not. But as soon as spring comes along, I'm going to go ahead and remove everything I did. And I'm going to get someone out here who knows about framing. And they're going to help me build an A-frame on this. Now what do you guys think? Should it slope to the sides like it currently is? Or I was thinking it might look kind of cool having a big A-frame, whoa, or I was thinking it might be kind of cool having a big A-frame going to each end, you know, a big structure, and who knows, maybe someday we could even cut a hole and make like a little upstairs with it, obviously we're not going to use these beams, we'll put a whole A-frame on the top of it with like an attic floor, that might be kind of cool for the future, but I, w I was also, I came up here like a day ago because I was going to maybe try to insulate the ceiling on this, a lot of people suggested. And the way this thing's built, I could put like a piece of foam board right into this and just hook it on the other side. Or I was thinking they have this shiny bubble wrap looking insulation I could just put across the whole ceiling and just go over all this stuff, maybe even leaving a little airspace. But I'm like, no, I don't want that because 
there's so much snow on it now that I actually want it to melt off. I'm not going to go up there and shovel it because this kind of concerns me how much this is warping from the weight of the snow on it. Now, like I said, a lot of the weight is pushing on the center of it, which is kind of concerning. I didn't, I didn't think about that when I put the roof on. I see that was a mistake because that's why it's kind of buckling here because the I-beam is kind of lowering a little bit. You can really see the buckle here. See the airspace? Yeah. So in the spring, I'm going to redesign this thing at some point and try to put an A-frame on the entire truck. But other than that, a lot of people complained about how the way this thing looks, but I personally love it. It looks rustic, and it still looks abandoned. I really like that. I, I want it to look unfinished with the foam like that. I, just, I left a piece of rotten wood here, because I think it looks cool when it's still abandoned looking. I think it's really nice like that. And uh, one other thing... I, I just want to address this because I guess I wasn't clear enough in my original video. This stove right here came from China. It is a knockoff of a better stove. So it resembles a stove that it is not. And I realize that now. I go back and I look at the description of it and I think this is just a Chinese knockoff because... See this? The burners on here do not remove. I got a lot of comments calling me stupid saying to remove the burners and my food would cook better. The entire top is one piece. You see, the screw couldn't go in because the casting, the casting holes don't line up properly. Again, the casting holes don't line up properly here either. That's why this is kind of crooked because this is supposed to be flat. That was another error. The gasket doesn't go on properly. Also, people told me that up inside of here, there should be a way to regulate how much air goes in. There is not. The way we regulate that is the damper that I added here on the pipe. People were also saying, um, why aren't you using the damper? You're wasting so much heat. I guess people couldn't see that I was using the damper because most of my footage from the last video, the camera was here. So you really have no idea which way this was facing. But yes, I was using that. And people also were asking, why did I install the stove pipes backwards? Yes, I know I did that. And I did that intentionally because I didn't want rainwater coming in the cracks. Because on an actual house, when it goes through the wall, you would typically have double wall pipe on the outside, which is insulated. I don't have that, so there's a chance that rain could get in through that. The reason you want double wall is because... You want the pipe to stay hot until the very end. That way creosote doesn't build up to a level where it can start a chimney fire. If a chimney fire starts in here, I don't really care. The entire thing is made out of metal. And yeah, people also criticize me for this. Again, this is a cheap knockoff stove. I don't think there was a way around this. I cut a hole in this. That's supposed to be like a catalyst. It's supposed to help heat up glowing red to help burn the smoke so it creates less emissions. Now, when I first bought this thing, this was this was an EPA certified stove, but it's not a real one. The listing wasn't real. So, this doesn't have its tags or paperwork or anything. I have a EPA certified stove that I heat my house with, and that thing, it's so efficient. You load it up, it can go almost 30 hours without touching it. No, but this thing, I'm going to remove this entire catalyst today. I'm going to probably get my hands covered in soot. But I think with the catalyst removed, the burner will actually heat up because the flames will be right on it. And I think that will solve our entire problem with the heating. And I think, especially tonight getting down to negative 20-something, we are going to need as much heat as, out of this as we can. And I think last time it performed a little poorly because of that catalyst. I had to smash a hole in it. If I didn't smash a hole in it, even though I got it up to temp, it wasn't working properly. So I just wanted to explain to you guys, because there was obviously a lot of confusion in my last video. This stove right here, it says United States Stove Company, which I looked up and did research. A lot of their stoves are actually made in China. Some of them are made in the US, but most of them are actually made in China. I don't know if this is actually one of theirs or not because it has so many defects. Now, 
I certainly got ripped off for the price I paid. I paid $300 on sale from $500. Definitely got ripped off, but I learned my lesson. And eventually when this thing breaks, I'm going to get another one for in here. All righty. So I guess the first thing I'm going to do in here today is do a little bit of cleaning up. I was using this kind of just as storage while I wasn't using it. So I'm just going to put all this stuff outside. It's not going to be snowing, so... We'll just leave it outside, and before we leave tomorrow, we'll shove it back in here. Now, what do you guys think about this? Because there's two sides to stuff like this. I'm saving these pieces of wood, hoping I can use them for a project in the future. But on the other hand, is it really worth taking up my space, having to keep moving this in and out every time I use the place, rather than just buying it again when I need it? I don't think so. So maybe this stuff here, we will leave it on the side of the road and someone can take it. If no one takes it, then I guess we'll use it as kindling to start our fires. Like, I save this stuff because it's nice trim board, for, and it's nice and polyurethane. But am I really going to use it? Is it worth it taking up my space? Because I moved this here from my house just so I didn't have to throw it away. The same with this flooring. I have so much of this brand new flooring. That is from a contractor who did flooring for me. And he had so many leftover containers. I wish I would have returned it at the time, but I can't anymore. What do you guys think about that? I should probably just get rid of this stuff I'm not using because it's just in my way. But we're going to get all this stuff out of here and we're going to start up a fire. I have a massive pile of firewood that I split from one of the dead fallen trees. So I'm not going to have to bring the log splitter in here like I did last time. The only reason I brought the log splitter into the truck is because... You know, it was kind of cold outside, and I, I am I can't complain that it was cold last time. It is way colder this time, and it's going to be... This is probably going to be my coldest camping video ever to date, if you, if you want to call it a camping video, because this is like a little shelter. Also, I also brought a caulking gun, because I want to caulk all those little pinholes that leak heat. Also, a lot of people were telling me that it was so dangerous that I was sleeping in the back of this truck because if there was ever a fire, it's against the code to have the door on the other side of the stove. Well, look what I got right here, where my bed was and where my bed will be again. I got myself an emergency exit. All you got to do is like that. Look at that. Look at that. Simple. All right, enough of that. This door is actually kind of falling apart. Look at this. See the hinges? You look at the hinges. See how they're like all broken? Look at this. But it looks okay on the bottom. It's still being held for now, at least. Eventually, when that goes bad, I'm going to be forced to drill each side and put some hinges in with nuts and bolts. All right, now this one takes a lot of strength to pull it down. There we go. I don't know if this is always like that. The bottom of the door is not completely shutting. I cannot get it to line up in here. It doesn't look shiny, so I'm doubting it ever actually closed. I just must have overlooked it. We are going to make some BLTs tonight. That means bacon, lettuce, tomato burgers with this nice griddle. This griddle I actually found in the woods a while back, completely rusted. I got a video of me sanding it with an angle grinder, and I seasoned it. Made it look pretty nice again. It was a piece of junk. It is a little warped, though. I wonder if that's from someone overheating it or not. Whoa, the blanket was stuck to the toboggan.
This is awesome. I forgot we had kindling in here. I thought I was going to have to run around the woods breaking off dead branches. I did not know we had so much kindling left. That's exciting. I don't have to get as much now. All right, we got a lot of firewood here now. See all these holes in the firewood and all these tunnels inside the wood? When I was splitting this back when it was warmer, there was these giant worms in it. I'm pretty sure they're their larvae for the Asian longhorn beetle, which I've seen tons of on this property. It's infested with them. I think that's why all the trees look sick. But this should be enough firewood for the night. There's also another kind of worm that's much smaller. It likes to make these tunnels underneath the bark, also killing the tree. That's why the bark is all kind of falling off on these so easily. Like, look at this piece. It fell off so easily. Something is hollowing out underneath, you see? Making all these... Yeah, look. Look at all these tunnels. All right, I think that'll be a good amount of firewood for the night. Now, we got a good amount of kindling right here, but I still want to go out in the woods and get really small stuff that I think will help the fire. And that'll be fun. While we're out in the woods with the toboggan collecting, I also want to take a look at the stream. I bet it's frozen because we've had negative temperatures every night this week. All right, here is the trail going to the stream. The only thing to have used it is a bunny rabbit. You see, they left tracks. There's a dusting of snow on top of a few inches of sleet. The sleet is almost hard enough to hold me. And that pink ribbon is the property boundary. The stream is not actually on the property. It's down in this gully between the next house. Oh, perfect. We already found our kindling. Look at this. I'm just going to break up tons of this after I am done looking at the stream. Yeah, it looks like a whole maple tree fell over. And look at this. So, um, I do believe that's a rabbit, but look at the smaller tracks. That's a squirrel. See how it just disappears? At first I was a little confused because I thought they were the same tracks. This is not fun to walk through. You gotta march lifting your legs up really high because you can't just drag your feet like you can through snow. Wow, it's so frozen out. I don't think there's going to be anything trickling over here. This will be fun to come out here in the summertime and actually spend maybe a week out here because this stream can be used for doing dishes, laundry, all kinds of stuff. I know for like two years when I bought my house, it was abandoned. So for two years, I used the stream to do laundry and stuff. That's where I got my water to bathe with. I would bring it inside, microwave it in a Tupperware bin, give myself a sponge bath. Did that for two years. Then we finally got running water coming out of the stream. I built like a foot tall dam out of cinder blocks with a pump, went right into the house's pressure tank, 
went about eight months just having a cold water faucet, which was a big help. Then I got the money and we turned the water on. Amazingly, it's barely frozen. Maybe after tonight being down near negative 20, this might actually freeze. But then again, this may never freeze because if we walk 200 feet up, it disappears. This is all groundwater, which is warm. So it may actually never freeze solid. Now, what I just told you about taking water out of a little stream, what I meant by that is I had a large piece of PEX pipe just entering the stream, which got pumped into the house, so that obviously only worked during the summer months. But it was very effective, because I was able to hook a washing machine up to that cold water faucet, able to take all the water out of that to flush the toilets, take the water out of that to um, bathe with after microwaving it. I think we got enough kindling for the night now. You know, I'm one of those people who gets my mind set on something and I'll skip lunch or dinner until I'm done working on whatever project it may be, which is not the healthiest thing because sometimes I even feel myself getting weak. So about two years ago, I started drinking these, also the cheaper Walmart brand of them, and the best thing ever is sometimes I forget them in the car when it's really cold out. And I've never found one that is frozen solid. It turns into like a milkshake. It's like soft serve ice cream. It's so good. Really good. You know, just in the past couple hours, I noticed the wind is really starting to pick up now. And I checked, we're gonna have a wind chill tonight, possibly over negative 50. That's gonna be the feels like temp, negative 50 something. So with the wind blowing this place, we're going to have to keep that wood stove cranking. So I just got my supplies in here. These are the bins I always bring when I'm camping. The stuff in this bin, we're only going to need the lighter and the knives. The rest of that is for setting up like tarps and stuff when I'm camping. And here's my toothbrush. Headlamps we'll need. Forks we'll need. The last thing I got to get from the car is my cooler with the food. But right now, first thing I want to do is get that heat shield, whatever you want to call it, out of the stove so it can function properly. So, let's see how we can get this heat shield out of here. First thing I'm going to do is get the ash out from last time. So we have a nice full firebox. There's not a lot in here because we only use this stove one time for a long time and another time for like an hour just to break it in. Yeah, we're only going to get about one bucket of ash. 
Every time I clean my fireplace out at home, it's got like four in it. But it's also much bigger. Good enough. I'm gonna go dump this outside. This is like fertilizer to the trees. Just gonna dump it in the woods, sprinkle it all around, and I'll be back to smash out that heat shield. Now, I don't think it's going to be that challenging to actually get it out. Oh, yeah. I just got to break it in a few spots. It should come out pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, look, it just rips out. Yeah, I'm just breaking the pieces and I'm gonna shovel it out again, but this is going in the trash. Cause this stuff, it's probably made out of like rock wool or something and it's never going to decompose properly. Rock wool is almost the same thing as asbestos. Still got a little bit more of it. All right, I gotta go to the stream and wash my hand off. All right, I think I got everything we need for the night in here. I do have more gear in the vehicle if I do need it. Tonight's supposed to be pretty windy. So here, this is for tonight. I love these things from Walmart. And I got some Dr. Pepper. You can tell by the scrape marks. That's been rolling around the floor of my car for a while. And I just bought this for making coffee in the morning. I just found out it has little tiny pinhole in it not a big deal right here is everything we're going to be making i got my cutting board i accidentally bought cabbage thinking it was lettuce because i'm stupid so i had to get lettuce the next day here and i just went ahead and got the pre-cooked bacon so i can eat the rest like jerky when i'm done here's some cheese and I also got some burger patties here. There's the buns down there. Got a whole bag of potatoes. And I brought what's left from the oil in my kitchen. We're going to make some french fries with that in the frying pan. Later on, there's not enough room on this little stove to do french fries and burgers at the same time. So the french fries will be like a snack later on in the night. There's our tomato. Here's the coffee for the morning. Got an orange if I want that. Beanie weenies. Those are just randomly in there. And this is always great when you put it on homemade french fries. It's really good. I just got a notification on my phone that the town I used to live in in Massachusetts, and basically all of Massachusetts... Wow, look at this. How is it like 28 degrees inside here when outside it's... Like 15. There's nothing in here producing heat, but somehow it's warmer in here. Anyways, most of Massachusetts schools are actually closed tomorrow because of the extreme cold. I remember when I was in Massachusetts, the reason they said they closed is not necessarily because the kids would freeze in that. Because honestly, negative 10, you know, up here in the northern New England... We get that sometimes a lot. Last year, we had more than 40 days where the morning was negative temperatures. You think they're going to cancel school for that? No. The reason they cancel school in Massachusetts is because it's typically warmer there. They only get a couple of these days a year, and their buses supposedly don't have heating elements in the engines, so they're very hard to turn over. Up here, most of the school buses apparently have plug-in engine block heaters 
it keeps the engine oil warm, so the engine starts right up like it's summertime. And it because you know on a vehicle like ninety percent of wear and tear is in the first thirty seconds of startup, because it's not lubricated. The engine has to spray the oil up in all the moving parts. So for a brief couple seconds, you got metal on metal there. But when it's really cold, you have even more wear and tear. I was thinking about getting a block heater because I found out for my car, it would only be like eighty bucks. And I know how to do it myself. I would just have to drain the oil out apparently before I was slided in. All right, everyone, I think it's time to rev this thing up. I'm going to leave the door open just at first so we get an instant draft going up the pipe. The flue is all the way open. I bought this thing at Walmart. It was only $2. It's awesome for camping because it's a little blowtorch, and it's, like, impossible to blow it out. Now, a lot of times if I'm camping, if I didn't bring anything like cardboard... I will grab a whole bunch of kindling, which is really tiny like this, and then you can just start from there. But today I brought a bunch of cardboard here. First I'm going to go ahead and jam the cardboard inside the stove. Got some boxes here. Those are pretty good. Jam a couple boxes in there. More cardboard. That seems like enough. Let's grab some handfuls of this kindling, jam it in there on top of it. And once we get this stuff going, I'll start putting some pieces of wood on top of it, starting with these really tiny ones. All right, I think we got this thing stuffed pretty nicely. That'll go nice. And I have a whole bunch of stuff right next to me that I'm gonna feed it until it gets really hot. Once it settles down, we'll just start throwing bigger stuff in. Here we go. And we're off. Look at that. The smoke is already going up the exhaust pipe. I don't think we're going to have any problem at all. Last time, the whole area filled with smoke because of that thing I removed. Punched a hole and it made it a lot better, but that thing just existing. Before I punched a hole, even when it got up to temp, there was no way to prevent the smoke from coming into the room. And it was also blocking this from heating properly. This time, I think it's going to get red hot. That was ridiculous. I had to wait like an hour for bacon to cook on this. Yeah, this is going to run really, really hot. While we're giving this a moment to heat up, let's run outside and take a look at the exhaust pipe. And we're also going to have to turn down that damper to make sure flames don't come racing up the pipe. Like that. We can turn it down a little bit. Just turn it, like, slightly. No smoke's coming in, but it stopped the flame. Here we go. Wow, I just heard something. Maybe, like, an icicle somehow on that thing just fell off. Oh, whoa, no, the ice is on top of the cap. That's where it's falling off from. Wow, look at that. This thing's going to start burning clean much quicker than I expected. The smoke is already gone. But it, it'll smoke for a bit every time we throw a piece in. Wood stoves, for the most part, burn pretty clean. Unless you're just putting things in. If stuff is properly seasoned, a wood stove should not be smoking a lot. This thing's burning real nice. Still got some flame going up the pipe. Shut it a little more. Little tiny bit more. No, a little that was a little too much. Now we're going good. Can you hear that noise? That sounds like screaming. 
that there was like a piece of ice or something must have just fell and touched something hot. Wow, we're already climbing on the gauge. We're getting hot already. Yeah, you're gonna hear lots of weird creaking as this place heats up and melts off the whole roof. I bet the whole roof is probably gonna melt off by morning. The whole reason I put the roof on the truck is because it had a one place where it was dripping water. So if anything, if it creates ice dams on the edges and starts coming in, um, that's the one spot it'll drip and we'll just put a bucket under it like I used to. I used to just put a bucket under it and every time it rained I would just dump the bucket outside. We are literally only five minutes into this and this thing, this proves it never heated up fully last time despite running it all night. That thing I removed was blocking the top. Yeah, it's smoking the stove. That, it didn't even season properly last time. So right now, we gotta leave the door open. I'm down here, there's not any smoke. We're just gonna wait for that to go out the door. It has to season again. Just like a new stove does, because this part of it has never heated up to this extent. It burned down enough. We're gonna throw more kindling in and start on the bigger pieces. Not gonna fit yet. Maybe crooked. Yep, I got it in there. All right, we just put every little branch in there from the toboggan. Now I can put the toboggan back outside. Every little piece out. Now it may be nice and warm in here, but one thing that's not warm is my butt. It feels like I'm doing one of those challenges where you put your butt on a block of ice and the last person to leave wins. It feels like that because I'm on a metal floor and it's like 10 degrees out. Very chilly. Now we're gonna let that heat up for probably another hour or even more before I start cooking. In the meantime, I'm just gonna sweep up.
look at this everyone we got some lynx tracks it looks like it's always nice to see the lynx i saw them on my trail cameras out here a while back So peaceful out here but I, I can already feel it now that the Sun just went down that wind chill it's starting to get finger numbing I've only been out here getting footage of the smoke for about five minutes my fingertips are already starting to get numb from it See how I'm sinking into the snow? That only seems to happen over here in the forest where a lot of the sleet got stuck in the trees. But as soon as I walk over here, I can stand on it because it all went on the ground making a crust deep enough that I can actually support my weight on it if I'm careful at least. Look at that. As long as I'm careful. It's a lot different here. I was in Maine a couple days. You need snowshoes there. There's like three feet on the ground in the northern part of the state. And they don't have a crust like this at all. You know, earlier when we were out collecting kindling, those rabbit tracks, that lynx is probably looking for the rabbit. Wow, that fuel tank is so rusty. But I stuck a dipstick in there like a year or two ago and there's no fuel in it, despite it saying there's half a tank. It says up here on the dashboard that there is half a tank. It is, wow, really noticeably warmer in here. We already have climbed up to 37 degrees. All right, time to go in for the night. That's really hot. Wow, we just got back in. This thing's burning nice and hot. It's already burning through some actual logs, making some nice coals. We are now reading at 52 degrees and we are still rising. I wanted to show you this before I throw it in the fire. Look at this. This may look like a little stick to you, but you know what this actually is? I wish I had the piece that it came out of to show you. This is like the center couple rings of the tree. Like, this, this, when I split it, this fell out of the middle of the log. Yeah, it fell out of one of these logs. It was the center of it. When I split it, it just came out. It was actually quite cool. Yeah, see, it's basically this. But I happened to get one that was perfectly round. And that was the first time I've ever got one. All right, absolutely huge improvements compared to last time I camped in here. These burners are actually very hot. This one is much hotter than that one because the door is open. Cold, more cold air is getting there. Even if I shut that, this is always going to be the slightly colder burner. But we are burning now really hot. This thing's burning well. It's just a matter of time before this place... Gets a cozy 70, 80 degrees in here. Well, most people would call that cozy. For me, around 60 is perfect once we get up there. And I think a matter of, it's just a matter of time before the snow on the roof starts melting. My fear is because it's so cold, like on a house. It'll dri dribble over to the overhang, freeze, forming a pile, causing water to pool behind it. A lot of times if you have a house with asphalt shingles, it'll go up inside the shingles if you don't have a steep pitch and leaks inside the house. My concern is it would leak onto the actual roof 
But the worst it could do is it'll drip out of this little pinhole. That's the worst that could possibly happen. And I'll just put a bucket underneath it. But you see, this thing shifted so much. Look at this. All the weight's on the center of it. So it started to buckle. It'll be good when we get all that off. Even if this happened to collapse, worst case scenario, in the spring, I'm just going to cut the entire roof off. And like I said, I'm going to frame up with someone else a A-frame on it. I think that'll work. That would be kind of cool to get done, potentially. Oh, wow. All right, everyone, you saw me in that time lapse right there doing something on my phone. I'm just working on a little bit of video editing, that's all. I have not touched this thing in 40 minutes. Wow, look at that. We burned through almost everything, but it's still nice and warm in there. I'm going to add some more pieces of wood, and it will catch right back up. Look at that. all those good coals in there. Go ahead, and it's best for the stove if you try to pull some of that hot embers towards the front of it, creating a nice bed to put more wood on top of. Go over here to our wood pile. These are frozen together. Now, throw them in there. One. Two, maybe we can fit a small one in there. Yep, just like that. Just finished drinking this soda. Is this true or is it a myth? It might be true. I've had multiple people say in my comments throwing an aluminum can in the fire can actually help get rid of the buildup in the chimney. It's some kind of chemical reaction. As the aluminum burns, it helps get rid of everything in the chimney. I don't know if it's true, but it's worth a shot. That soda, that soda in there is boiling like crazy. We come back to this in 10 minutes. That can's going to be gone. They melt really fast when you throw them into a fire. It's a pretty cloudy night, but it looks like we have a full moon. That cloud cover is supposed to clear in the next couple hours. About five minutes later, there's the aluminum can. You see, it melted into nothing. Look at that. It's all gone. Now that's getting carried up the exhaust pipe. I don't know, guys. Is it actually going to clean it up? Maybe. I'm burning that nice center log now. Now, here's something that I used to do when I was a little kid around the campfire. But around the actual campfire, you had to back off because it could throw embers at you. This, it's either going to burn a hole through it, releasing the air, or if pressure can build, it'll explode. Oh, it exploded! Wow! I did that during one of my last camping videos, if you remember, and it did not explode. It actually exploded. That was kind of exciting. All right, let's start heating up and preheating our griddle to make burgers on. Actually, we can do it like this. Because I'm only going to put two burgers on it right in the center. Now maybe, maybe we actually can start to preheat oil at the same time to make french fries. All right, I just put my little frying pan on here. Let's fill that up with some oil, and we'll let that heat up for a good 20 minutes or so. Yeah, we just fill it up maybe halfway. That'll be good for making french fries. Hear that? Definitely hot enough to cook on now. That's been heating up for about 20 minutes. I switched the burners because that one's hotter, just to get the oil going. This stove is working 
so far, I think it's going to work marvelous since we, yeah, since we removed that inside part. It's running really good now. Closing this makes it burn a little bit slower through that hole. That's how we'll leave it throughout the night. Currently, I have the damper all the way open, and it's producing so much heat. I love it. Come look over here. Oh, yeah, I also just found potholders. I was like, oh, no, that I forget to bring some. But then I luckily remembered that I use this microwave here as a spot to put things like this so the mice couldn't ruin them. Yeah, look at the temperature currently. It's nice and cozy in here. 72. All right. Tomato and lettuce. I'll cut these up as soon as I get the food cooking. Oh, look at that. Is this rotting? I just bought it yesterday. Or do you think it got frozen slightly? Um, right here are some potatoes. I'm going to put that outside as soon as I get off enough for my burgers. A deer or something will probably like to eat that. The same with the cabbage. I'm probably going to put that outside because I'm not going to end up eating it. Something like a deer will love it. Or the bunny rabbit. The rabbit will probably come right after that. I'm going to be fat tonight. I'm probably going to have like a couple batches of french fries. I'm going to just cook these three potatoes for now. That big pot of grease is acting like a heat sink and it's making it hotter in here, which is a good thing. All right, we're good with french fries. All right, we got a good amount of french fries there. I used to be so good at cutting those evenly since I used to make french fries like that all the time when I was little. And in here, the temperature, look at that. Now we're up to 78. It's gonna keep getting hotter and hotter and I think it's because this is producing so much heat. Time to start cooking. All right, everyone, got my spatula, got my burgers. It's actually so hot that I have my camera backed up quite a bit with it zoomed in. All right, let's start up our burgers. Bring it over my french fries now. Okay, it's gonna kind of re-season the top of the stove. I'll just wipe it down later. That's enough for now. All right, so the leftover burgers I'm gonna bring home. I'm gonna put those in the cooler and put it outside so they don't go bad. Or maybe I'll make it for breakfast because these gotta be eaten fast. You see, they're starting to turn brown even though I just bought them yesterday. So. Take all these french fries, we'll throw those in as soon as those are done. Yes, I even cooked the ends of them, I'm not wasting them, if that's what you're thinking. Now it is time to chop up our tomato here. Just want one big slice for each of them, then the rest of the tomato I'm gonna just eat. I can even make a little side salad with this and the extra lettuce before I discard the rest of it to the deer or whatever. Yeah, I'll eat the rest of that like an apple. Now here we are with the lettuce, which is a little bit rotten. I don't even want to take it out onto the cutting board. So I think I'm just going to cut a big bunch of it off right here. Yeah, like that. That's enough for our burgers. Cut off a little more. We'll have like a little side salad with the rest of that. Oh, gross. That's a little rotten right there. I could probably get more off of that, but that's all I need. Chop this up a bit. OK. 
cut it the other way a little bit. That's good. Throw some of that on the burger. Whoa, the truck just shifted and made a big knock. How are those french fries doing? Oh my gosh, that grease is way hotter than the stove at home. They're almost burning. Yeah, typically I slow cook these at home, but they're actually burning there. We're gonna switch these. This needs more heat and this needs less heat. Cause those are gonna be not cooked in the middle. So yeah, let's do a little switch. Now the french fries will cook slower and the burgers will cook faster. That's the plan. They're already going to be a little bit too crunchy. I think I'm going to get those out now and I can start munching on those. I'm going to make another batch to eat with my food. Yeah, let's get these out. And I'm going to pat them off with a paper towel because that's a little more healthy than eating all this oil all over it. Yeah, these french fries, they're not even that bad. They're actually cooked pretty good for me. They looked like they were burning, but somehow they came out all right. They're actually still undercooked, but I'm going to eat them while I'm doing this stuff. All right. Alright, so this is for my burgers right now. I have some french fries here. They're undercooked, but they're still really good. I even forgot about the seasoning. I'll put it on the, on the next batch. So moving the burners around, that's a good thing. Because they're slow cooking now, being on the front. And the burgers, you can hear sizzling away. I'm about to go over there in a minute or so and flip them. But these are good. I don't have salad dressing or anything, but this is a... Nice, healthy salad, I guess. Oh yeah, that's looking good. These are slow cooking. So these won't be done for a while, hopefully around the same time as the burgers. That's cooking well. I gotta be careful, there's a lot of grease splattering around. See it's all over the pipe. But when I'm done, I'm gonna like wipe it down evenly on the top of the stove and it should look nice. It's a good thing it's not summertime, because we would have every bear in the area clawing at the door trying to get in. Now, they, they might try, but as soon as I make noise, I bet they'd run away. We only have black bears. We had some of them at the house um, last summer, and I think it's because it was so dry out. There weren't as many berries, so the bear was more hungry. Kept going in our garbage cans. All you got to do is put a shot glass of ammonia in every garbage bag. As soon as they get a whiff of that, they are not going to tear it apart because I had one time the bear brought the garbage bag all the way through the woods, a big nasty trail of it. That was gross to clean up. Back to my salad. Because these are undercooked, I think I'm going to throw them back in right when those are almost done.
If I was cooking on the grill at home, I would know if these were done or not because I'm so used to it. This contraption, I'm not really sure, so I want to kind of cut into one of them and see how it's doing. Ah, yeah, that's just about cooked. I'm going to switch burners again to get this one really going. Then I'm going to throw cheese on them and let them melt. I think we'll be eating this in like five minutes. I already have the door cracked because the stove is just so hot. I'm going to have to check the forecast, see what it is outside right now. I'm just getting rid of this. Uh, something can come get that. I just checked the weather forecast. We're not extremely cold yet, but it's supposed to really start falling in a few hours. Right now we have about 8 degrees out, and tonight we're supposed to get down into the negative 20s, close to negative 30. I hope so. Guess what? Tomorrow the high temperature is 9 below, negative 9 below. That is awesome. I love days when it stays really cold like that. Then tomorrow night is going to be even worse. It's going to be like negative 35. That'll be a fun night. I told you I'm going to mess around with hot water and stuff outside. We'll see how that goes. All right, everyone. We're just about done. These French fries are all just about done. Put a piece of cheese on here. That should melt in like five minutes. This is not the hot burner. It's barely cooking on this side. Bacon's already fully cooked, but just let it warm up, crisp up a little bit, I guess. All right, we'll go ahead and save the rest of that. Nice everything buns. Smells really good. I love everything bagels. Never given these a try, but they were 50% off, so I had to go and buy them. Get those prepared. There we go. Now I gotta grab some paper towels because I want to put a good amount of padding on this plate just so I can be a little bit more healthy, absorb all that grease, and use this piece to pad the top of it. It'll absorb most of it. And this can go back in the cooler. right back in the cooler and this stuff does not have to be in there this is going back outside in the cold I don't really care if it freezes I doubt it will freeze I think this will keep it overnight from freezing doing the opposite of a cooler whoa got it open the first try that's rare That wind is starting to really pick up. Ooh, an ember came out. And maybe a deer will love this. Maybe a bunny rabbit will love that. Sorry, I don't really like cabbage that much. Let's throw it in an open area where a deer will probably find it.
the next time I cook in this place, I'm going to be able to do it extremely well without any problems. I, over the past hour, perfected how to do this properly. I learned, you see right now, the flames are going straight up right to the burners, and it cooks extremely hot. Now, if I go up here and open the damper, now there's suddenly a big current. It's sucking all the heat up the pipe. The flame is not even aimed at the burners anymore, so it results in a giant waste of heat. Yeah, just like at night, you want this thing almost closed, and it keeps most of the heat in here. Because if you have it wide open, you're probably losing 80% of your heat. But shut, you're probably keeping like 60 of it. Most wood stoves run at about 60% efficiency, while the newer ones run at like 80% efficiency, the ones that have a real catalytic converter in them. All right, everyone, that looks pretty good. It's been about 10 minutes since I last put the bacon and stuff on. Time to get all this out of the frying pan. Later on, when I throw this greasy paper towel into the fire, that's going to really make it roar for a minute. That's going to be a little snack in a while. Alrighty, it's finally time to get the burgers off of here. And I think they're cooked nicely. There we go. Nice and well done. Um, am I able to touch this? Yeah, it's not that bad. Not too hot. Perfect. We'll clean that up after dinner. All right. Done drying off the french fries. We dried them off good enough anyways. Put some seasoning on them. That's always really good. I wish I had an onion. I love to put a couple onions on these. That's a pretty good looking BLT burger with an everything bun. Put a side of fries and some sparkling grape juice. Sometimes these are impossible to get open without pliers. If I ha if I need pliers and I gotta go back out to the vehicle, I'm not even gonna drink it. Oh, uh, I broke it. It's hissing, but I can't turn it, especially with my greasy hands. Ah, oh, there, good, we got it. Now, like sixty percent of the time or so, I always get it to leak. Yeah, I see the bubbles going nuts. This is gonna take. This is gonna be a process. To get it to not explode everywhere. I can see the bubbles in there going crazy. You see that? The bubbles. These things are like always over, over carbonated. Those look good. Time to sit down. Can I open it now? Oh, the bubbles are racing back up again. I'm risking it. All right, yeah, we're good this time. Can't wait to try these burgers. Mmm. 
Look at that, it's still a little pink inside too. That's perfect. Perfect burger. Mmm. Watch this. Greasy paper towels always flare up like crazy. Yep. It's basically the same thing as being covered in fuel. Really hot. Wow, look at the oil coming out of it. It's literally dripping. I didn't know there was that much oil we got off of it. Wow. We don't want to fire on the top of the stove. Because if, if, if this was hot enough, that can literally combust. That's how kitchen fires start. But I, I, don't, know, I don't know why that's usually a problem. The problem is usually people don't think to smother it. People usually throw water at it. It's pretty simple. You just got to grab basically anything and just smother it really quickly. I'd probably grab that cutting board. Yeah, it'd probably melt, but it would go out, definitely. Or, yeah, that frying pan over there, throw that on top of it. It would go right out. And that's gone. All right, everyone. That was a little bit too much food. I'm hurting from stuffing all that down. Now... This is my last batch of french fries, then I'm going to drain the oil and clean that pan off. I just cleaned that pan pretty well, um, not perfect. I put it back on the stove so that the grease from the burgers can actually re-season it so it doesn't rust up. This pan right here, since I'm cooking with canola oil, Nothing got burned onto it. All I have to do is drain it and wipe it out, and it's good to go for next time. That's how cast iron works. Yep, I don't have any cleaner in here, unfortunately. I wish I did, but in the car I have Windex. It's probably frozen, but I can defrost it, and then I'm going to use that to clean the tables in here. Um, yeah. Because I know I got grease on this table, among with a lot of juices from the vegetables. Honestly, those last batch of french fries were a little overcooked for me. I don't like french fries that are crunchy. I like them where they're firm, but they don't have a crunch. Not firm as in raw, but... 
they haven't like became crunchy yet. They cook through, but they're not crunchy. That's my favorite. I should say a little bit soft. I am going to break out from all this grease probably tomorrow. Is it just my imagination? Because I feel like when I eat greasy food, I'm not really touching my face. I feel like it's evaporating and it's just in the air being around it. I love these pieces like this. Great, but a little bit too hot. I know it's not good for my health, but I probably should have brought some lard. Because, you know, it solidifies when you're done. And even if you're not going to reuse it, you can put it outside in the winter. And animals this time of year are looking to fatten up. Things like lard or bacon grease, when it solidifies, you can go ahead and throw some bird seed or corn in it. And animals will love it. It's basically homemade suet cakes. All right, temperature update. Outside it says it is a goose egg, zero degrees. I got that term from the weatherman. He usually says goose egg. What is it inside here? 82, what's this one saying? This one's saying 78. So. Are they both accurate? Is there really a four degree difference right here? About 82, about 78. Which one do you think is more accurate? This clock here costs $20, so it's more expensive, but it's possibly not cal calibrated correctly, or maybe it was dropped, which could have messed it up. On the other hand, this one can't really lose its calibration unless you break it. But this is from the dollar store. It's really cheap. But regardless, they're kind of in the ballpark together. I am proud to say since the last time we slept in here, we fixed the stove. This thing now is capable of keeping this place at 80 degrees and it's not even running as hot as it could. I could open that damper a little more, get that fire burning even hotter. It's 80 in here, and that is awesome. Last time we struggled to keep a good temperature in here. Despite no insulation and all the leaks, it's keeping over 80 degree temperature difference from outside. That's awesome. As far as my bed back here, I was thinking at first because the door doesn't shut, there's a little crack at the bottom. I thought I was going to be cold, it being... It's not even done dropping. It's going to keep dropping all night. And I thought I was going to maybe move my bed right here so I could be closer to the stove. Nope. It's plenty warm in here. All right, everyone. This scared me so bad. I was like, oh, my gosh. Is there a bear out there? The back door right here. I heard, I, I heard a big clunk, which was the door shifting. And then I heard... The wind gust somehow went through the cracks in the door, but instead of whistling, it went worse. I don't know how it made the noise. Something maybe rattling. It sounded like a big, angry growl. And it's winter, so my first thought after being scared was, maybe it's a coyote. I don't think so. It's the wind. Weird noises. Yeah, that growling sound is definitely the wind. Definitely. Well, it's a sure good thing that that wasn't a coyote growling, because now I gotta go outside and do something. Whoa. Wow, it's cold out there. You know, I wish it would show up on camera, but it just doesn't. It's so bright out here from the moon, but on camera all you can see is the light inside the truck. Coming back in. See, we have pretty good privacy. Even if there was someone looking in here, they literally can't see around the corner at what I'm doing. We got a really good draft sucking in all that smoke. Just cleaned up the top of this. You see, this is where we spilled the oil. I tried to hide it a little bit by like 
wiping the whole thing down a little bit with oil. Definitely looks a lot better. It smoked for like five minutes. Now it looks a lot better. And uh, temperature wise, 85, 82. I swear, like a minute ago, I checked these and they were the same. There's got to be some kind of draft affecting one of them. There's got to be. There has to be some kind of draft in here. I just shut all the lights in here off for a minute. These mirrors look really cool. Look at that. Reflecting all around in here. Let me back up even more. Look at that. It's, these mirrors are throwing it and reflecting it over on that wall. All right, everyone. It's about 1130 and very peaceful in here. The traffic on the nearby high, um, highway has just about calmed down. The only sounds we can hear now is the sound of a crackling fire, the sounds of flames flapping around in there, and a clock ticking. I'm going to have a little snack right now. I'm going to have that orange and maybe go on my phone a little bit and brush my teeth, and I think it's bedtime. You know, I, I, I think I might actually go back on what I said. Um, I've been sitting here for a while, not maintaining the fire, and it calms down in like an hour, not that much time. So I think I am actually going to move the bed closer to it. I know I said I wasn't, but I'm going to. It sure is windy out. We've already dropped back to about negative nine. We're doing good. It's only about 11.38 on the clock. When I got here today, this dish soap was frozen. That's thawed out. Inside here at the moment, we've dropped back to 58. Few factors. It's much windier out going through this truck. Much colder out. I let the fire die down a little bit. I'm going to have to get that kicking up again. You know, this is actually a really nice seat right here. I like this. You know, someone had an idea for me about removing the steering wheel. I think it looks cool because it lets you know you're still in a vehicle. But someone said it's kind of a waste of space. I'm wondering if somehow I can make like a chair here. Or I'd be better off maybe finding a driver's seat, removing the steering wheel, and I can eat at this. Use the dashboard as a table. Make this into like a little kitchen space. I do have a sink outside. No, it's not a sink. It's some plastic heavy duty bin. Um, I'm not sure what it's for, but I'm going to drill a hole in it. And I want to put a drain in it. I'm never going to have working water here, but I want to put a drain in it so I can go to the stream, get a bucket of water, pour it in here after heating it up. Or I'm hearing scary noises out there. Or I could just leave it here when it gets to room temperature. I could do dishes and stuff. But, yeah, that's how it used to be back in the day in very primitive houses before plumbing was a thing. You'd have to go out to the hand pump well or a stream, bring it in, dump it in a sink like that, do your dishes, and you pull the plug, and the pipe just goes through the wall onto the ground. I kind of want to do that in here. And right here, there's a good amount of snow sitting on the windshield. I want to see if I can, boom. That did not go as planned. I could hit it a lot harder, but I don't want to break something. So you see, most likely if I hit this hard, I would break the seal between the spray foam, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to break that gap, because that will make air leak even more. But as I'm around, other than the door not being shut, I didn't even know that was open. That's probably why it's getting so cold. Other than that, I really don't feel any big drafts. There's really no noticeable drafts. Place is pretty good. All right, I have some extra toilet paper and plates. 
and putting my pot holders away in there so the mice don't get to them. Because we're not going to need any of that stuff until next time we're in here. The only thing I'm going to cook in the morning is probably coffee, honestly, before we head out of here. That's going to be really cool starting the car when it's negative 25 in the morning. It, it's going to be like... It's going to take a while to crank it, I bet. It had a really rough start a couple days ago and it was only negative 5. Got a whole bag of oranges last week for my mother, and that was the last one of them. They were all really good. You just gotta get massage them for like a minute, soften them up, and the skin comes off pretty easily. I'd rather an orange than a little mandarin any day. Depending if they're ripe, these ones were nice and ripe. Paper towel goes in the fire and this gets thrown outside so it can decompose. Alright everyone, I just went out to the car because I forgot I had this Windex I mentioned earlier. I can't believe it's not frozen for being negative 10 out there. I guess the car is retaining some residual heat because it was pretty chilly going out there without a jacket. Let's get to cleaning up. Ah, the nozzle is frozen though. The nozzle is frozen. This couldn't freeze because there's a lot of it, but ah, man. Not a big deal. That's yeah, working good. You know, I didn't clean this last time either, so this is well needed. I don't know if you saw earlier, I put my cheese down on the table, and I was like, oh man, I looked at the other side, and there was like pieces of, I don't know what stuck to it, just dust and debris. So I threw my first piece of cheese outside, plus mice are probably walking around on the table when I'm not here. A little bit too much cleaner. I don't know if you can hear that. It's really windy outside. I'm not really worried about a tree falling down. Like I mentioned back in December, there was a storm here and also in Maine. Here we probably lost around the truck maybe six trees or so. And total on my property we lost about 50 something trees. I've only cut up about five of them so far but i think that giant storm would have taken out most of the weak ones so i'm not too worried about one falling on the truck while i'm in here on the bright side well bad news first bad news is the drought made the trees very weak over the past couple years and even though that it's starting to rain a lot now because they're weak the bugs just attack them and that's why basically across the entire country I, basically everything across the country I'm, I've been seeing the trees or pine trees specifically they're dying like crazy it's because the droughts made the trees weak so the bugs just absolutely went attacking 
Okay, on the bright side, I have so many trees down from that storm. It's free heating for me for like at least 10 years. And that's only the trees that fell in these storms. There's already so many trees laying on the ground, dead trees still standing. Um, I, if I keep up with it and keep on going and chainsawing all that stuff up, I, I don't have to buy fuel for decade. I have so much fuel to burn in this stove and especially at the house. Because I converted to wood burning, especially because I have so many dead trees and because the way the world is now, I don't really trust the supply chain. Who knows if I can even, if there might be something that goes on where I can't even get fuel. Usually I heat with fuel oil, which is similar to diesel. It's just refined a little bit less. And one thing that really encouraged me to get the wood stove is it almost hit $7 a gallon. It went back... Went down to like four. Now it's back up to like five for some reason. But it's still very expensive. Usually we pay under three dollars on a normal year. But it's been elevated for a while. The wood stove will pay for itself in like two years. Ever since I got the wood stove, I probably cut 90 something percent of my diesel consumption. It only runs the furnace, and the furnace only has to run if I'm out of town for more than a day, because the wood stove shuts off, cools down, thermostat kicks in, the furnace revs up. That's how it is. I'm only going to burn fuel when I'm not home, and I have the thermostat set where the furnace will only turn on if it gets down to, like, 50, just so the pipes don't freeze and the cat doesn't freeze. That's about it. And the pet snake. And the pet toad. I really love these camera lights because you guys see how bright it's making the picture in here, right? It's on 3% of its light. Go all the way up to 100%. But you see on camera, it doesn't make a huge difference. Look at that. Look how much it killed the battery. Go back down to like single digits. That's where I keep it at night usually. I have had this thing on single digits all night. This thing's been on for like eight hours and it hasn't been plugged in one bit. It's amazing. But on a hundred, it's dead in like 40 minutes. It's very efficient. If you have it on a hundred with a cord attached to a power bank, this thing will run for like, I'd say 12, 14 hours on high with a power bank. Really good. Look at that! That looks like a smiley face! The wind sure is gusty. Right now we have the same situation but not as strong as the giant storm that took down all the trees. We have a cold front rushing through. That's why it's so windy. The cold air is pushing out all the warm air. And it's creating tons of wind, and that's why we're dropping in temperature so rapidly. When I started camping today, it was 15. Right now, I just checked, and we've got down to now negative 16 or so. Yeah, so that's like 31 degree drop. Wow. And finally, now that we got the temperature roaring again... Yeah, we definitely went back up around 63, and we're still climbing. I just, I just corrected the fire, and you saw I 
had the window slightly cracked. Wow, it is so bright out here that I don't even need a flashlight to see and the sky is clearing a lot. All right, everyone, we're now maintaining a good 68 degrees. It is almost 1.30. I'm about to go to bed, but first I want to go for a little walk outside, see what it feels like as far as the cold. All right. Oh, wow snowing out yeah I did say we we're gonna get a little bit of snow wow it's actually coming down really hard I don't know if you could tell on the camera how hard this is actually coming down whoa it's coming down so hard it's coming down at a really good clip look at this it's snowing pretty good Wow, and the wind is picking up like crazy. Can you tell? Wow. Look at that wind. I think it's gonna get even more cold. It's already like negative 25 out. I can't wait until, no, it's not negative 25. It'll, it should be negative 25, I meant to say, by morning. It's like negative 16 or something at the moment, and yeah, it'll be awesome when we get to come out here in the morning, but it's bedtime now. Right back into the nice warm truck. Wonder how much snow we'll get. It says where it's only supposed to last like an hour, so it's just a passing snow squall. But the way it's coming down, I wouldn't be surprised if we got a couple inches on the ground. Let's load the stove up really good and try to get some sleep. I'm going ahead and putting really big pieces in, because they should last longer. Now, with that really big piece, I don't know if I can get another big one in. I might just have to settle for a smaller one, like this. This one might fit. This one's kind of big. Wow, we're going good in there now. It fit, yeah! We got it in. Uh, this is, I don't think, uh, maybe if we have a short one, I can jam it in there standing up. We got any short ones? Potentially. Not. I think we're good for the night. So now that it's burning really good, shut the door. And we're gonna shut the damper. All the way. All the way doesn't mean it's shut and will smother it. It can still get by it enough so it'll smolder and create heat. So, I don't want to sleep too late. I set my alarm for nine, which is going to give me 
Seven hours of sleep. If I get to bed by two. Here's a view from my bed. You know, when you're running a wood stove, it takes all the moisture out of a building because wood or burning something like oil, they're considered dry heat. So it takes the moisture out of a building, it helps dry up the floor, sucks it out of the firewood, makes your lips chapped, that kind of stuff. On the other hand, if I was burning propane, like when I was in that abandoned hotel, that video I made, all the walls started icing up, especially around the doors, there was so much frost. That's because the heater was creating humidity and it was freezing to all the surfaces. In here, last time we had a little bit of frost on the back door, but what I mean by that is it's sucking up all of the moisture in the air. If we were burning propane in here instead, the walls would be all covered in a thick frost, like if I had my little buddy heater instead of this. But the little buddy heater, it would never be able to keep up with this. That was only good in my video like inside the culvert pipe or if I'm car camping it's not good for heating an entire room unless it's well insulated that is rated for indoor use it's got a little co detector and it automatically will shut down I remember when I used that inside the igloo it ran for like five minutes and it kept shutting itself off because it was it, yeah it was bringing it to unsafe levels pretty quickly because it was such a tiny space all right everyone it's time to go to sleep Stove is nice and hot. It's a good 70 degrees in here. Edge of the bed is nice and warm from the stove.
Good morning, everyone. It's about quarter of eight in the morning, and it appears the coldest we have got inside the truck was about 45 over the night. I just threw more wood in the stove. This thermometer says a little bit higher. Almost 50. Just got up, and yeah, I did not get that well of sleep last night. I estimate myself only getting probably four hours max of sleep. And right now I feel extremely cold, but it's not that cold in here. Maybe it's the draft. I think I'm just exhausted and tired. I'm going to have some coffee, and I think getting my body going will make me not be cold. Yeah, I... At first, when I went to bed, I was too hot, so I moved the bed away, right against the wall. Woke up about three hours later, really cold. Moved the bed closer to the stove, threw more wood in. But I never became not cold again throughout the night. According to the thermometer, it's really not that cold in here. Especially to my standards, it's not that cold, but... I feel cold. I think I'm just exhausted and couldn't really sleep. Or maybe it's just really drafty. Because right now it's about 45 degrees in here. But outside, I just went out there to use the bathroom. And outside, we are way down to about negative 28. Um, the sun has been out for about an hour, so... We probably did get down to negative 30 throughout the night. I, I gotta show you guys outside. Because it's so cold, the snow is so squeaky and crunchy. I love that. First, I gotta throw coffee onto the stove. Alright, give that like 20 minutes or so to get nice and boiling. As you can see, the stove is running pretty hot. When I woke up, it was more in the center of best operation range, but still running hot. And we will see. I just threw more wood in. I don't think we're capable of getting back up anywhere near 70 since it's so cold and so windy out right now. I put this over here onto my bed because I was wondering if it would fall because, you know, it was up a little bit when heat rises. I was thinking down here where the bed is, maybe it would fall, but it doesn't appear to be falling at all. Especially when I come over here, it feels very cold, but... I'm just probably tired. Hear that? Is that a crow? Alright, we can't be out here for long. It's really cold. And I definitely don't have the right jacket for this weather to be out there for that long. Oh, there's a little bit of frost on the door. Just a little bit. Yeah, just listen to the snow. I love when it's this cold and you're walking around and it squeaks. Look at this. Look at all these nasty drips coming off of the chimney. It's the same thing it does back at the house. The condensation created by the chimney. See it dripping out from the cap? That's what happens. And look, uh, I came out here a couple minutes ago. We were smoking like crazy, but I guess the new wood caught on fire and it kind of stopped smoking. 
So yeah, like I said yesterday, if the stove pipes were installed correctly, it would keep the creosote from coming out of the cracks. But then you'd have rainwater able to get in without the double wall. So I'd rather have this dripping than rainwater getting inside. Oh, we just started smoking again. Thankfully, my windshield, it's fluffy snow, so I don't even have to spend time out here getting anything off. Going for a little walk in the woods. Trying to get my blood pumping. In this type of weather, I should probably be wearing like a ski mask or something. The inside of my nostrils hurts, it's so cold. And my fingertips are already starting to hurt. And I've only been out here holding the camera for like five minutes, less, two minutes probably, since I left the truck in reality. But I'm just gonna run down this trail and back. It'll only take about 10 minutes. Oh, it's so cold. It is still really cold. The wind chill is way down there like they said. It was going to be negative 50 feels like temperatures today throughout the entire day. Wow. Yeah, it's really not uncommon for us to get down this cold. We typically do it a couple days out of the year. But thing is, there's a really good wind. Uh, let me back in. It's not letting me back in. I gotta squeeze. I literally have to squeeze. It's not opening for me. Yeah, my fingers are hurting from being out there. I do have my big green negative 30 jacket if you've seen me wearing that before. I don't wear that often. I'm gonna have to put that on when I go back to the car. Yeah, this is going up. Yeah, I don't think it was really that cold where I was sleeping unless I was feeling the draft from the bottom of the door not being able to shut all the way. Yeah, so remember yesterday how I was talking about how like down in Massachusetts, they always close their schools for some reason when it gets this cold. But yet up here, they they never really shut them down for it. And I thought it was because there was block heaters or something. Or I guess people up north are just tougher and used to it. I know I love this kind of weather. I'm just... Like I said, tired, and I shouldn't be out there right now until I get my body moving. And I need the proper jacket. Yup, I just checked again. Not a single school up here closed. Yeah, because states that are used to the cold like this, they don't have cold days off like states that aren't used to it. Like Massachusetts typically doesn't get this cold often, so that's why they closed. Plus... I look up Massachusetts, right now they're only around negative 5, which is not that bad at all. We're, we got down to around negative 30. And it says that we're going to maintain it being really cold all day. It says today's high is negative 12. Then tonight it's going to crash down supposedly even colder than now. Yeah, today is Friday the 3rd of February. Very cold day. Tonight, I'm going to take a drive back up to northern Maine. And we're going to do another camp. Been wanting to do that for a while in the middle of nowhere where we don't have to listen to traffic or anything. That's going to be a cold ride up. can hear all those crows. They've been going nuts out there for quite a while. I think they are looking through the food I threw out there. I'm not sure if they're mad or not about it all being vegetables or not. So my water's already starting to boil. I just spent the last half hour or so watching a local news. Well, 
this far up in the top of the state, there's actually not a news network for us, but they do show the area on their weather maps. The news that I was just watching is WMUR, which I believe is in the lower part of New Hampshire, and they were talking about how up here it's so bitterly cold that you can get frostbite in as little as 5 or 10 minutes with the wind chill being down near negative 50. But, no, up here, I checked, none of the school districts closed. A few of the cities in New Hampshire closed their doors. But all the little towns, they're open today. Just being out there a few minutes, I can see why a lot of school districts would also close just for it being so cold. I'm just saying, I think it's weird how they're closing them in the warmer parts of the state and not the colder parts. I was just told once a while back it's because the buses aren't reliable as far as starting in this weather. Alright, let's grab our instant coffee. I didn't realize we had one from last time, so... We can probably, no, that's too much. We can almost use it up. And I also forgot creamer, so it's going to be dark coffee. But I think this instant coffee won't be that bad without creamer because it is already kind of sugary. You see how it goes in and it's brown like it already has creamer? It's not black coffee. Yeah, we'll just have some very strong coffee. I've been up for like 40 minutes and I'm not cold anymore. My body has got working, and I'm really not that cold. As soon as I drink this coffee, I think I'm going to be good to head out the door and start up the car and get things done. Start the car up. I'm going to give that, like, 15 minutes to fully heat up. In the meantime, I can bring my bins back and forth, get this place cleared out pretty fast. I'm going to leave the wood stove roaring until we get out of here and I'll just shut the door and that's not going to start a fire it'll just burn itself out it'll probably stay hot for like five hours last time I did this believe it or not the stove was still hot after three hours before I went and left but it considerably stops producing heat after just a few we already got our temperature back up in here to around 60 I didn't think we were going to be able to do that but it does run a lot hotter with the door open, despite what people may think. It's all about the damper. If the damper's open, it goes right up. But that little vent on the door is very restrictive. It's good for at night for a slow burn. But if you want it to run hot, the door's got to be cracked at the very least. Yep, we are rising everywhere. Back here is up to 48. I really like sitting right here. And also, I was sitting on this wheel well a few minutes ago, and I was thinking how nice it would be to have a table, like, maybe bolted to the floor in the middle of here like an RV. You could use both of the wheel wells as benches. This coffee is not bad, but it's really weird. Without cream or anything, it kind of smells like water I just boiled vegetables in. It's a bit weird, but I'm going to let it cool for a minute and then drink the rest. Right now, it is more windy than it has been all night. That wind is sure picking up. So I'm going to grab that coffee. I'm going to bring a couple of these bins out to the vehicle. I'm going to open the back door, get everything back in here so that we can take off. I'm, I have to take the mattress with me, the bedding, that kind of stuff, because if I don't, Mice will probably destroy it at some point if I'm not back for a while. But I only have enough stuff to get out of here where I probably only have to make three trips back. The vehicle's basically right outside. Got that fire cranking again. Everything's put back. 
Now I got to get all that lumber that I threw out and just stack it right back here. You know, very few wood stoves have a cold air intake. A cold air intake is when there's a separate pipe bringing the cold air in to feed the fire air so that it's not pulling your warm air from the room into it like this and just wasting some heat. So it has to get it from somewhere. So that means the wood stove is pulling in from any little crack it can. But that's normal. Almost every stove in the world, almost every furnace in the world, no matter what it burns, unless it's electric, it needs an air source. So it's getting it from every little crack. When I just bent down here to reset the mouse traps that I tripped, I felt out of these cracks. Because when I built this, this was pressure treated wood, which is wet. And as it dried out, it shrunk, making cracks. I can feel a strong breeze coming out of these cracks. Because these are some of the holes that the wood stove is drawing from. But at least most of this is, it's freezing air, so it basically stays really low to the floor. Not really where I am. Not a big deal. But I bet if I put my clock down there, it would be really cold. Let's check back on that temperature in like 10 minutes or so. Just gonna move it away. I just needed it there while I was moving the bedding around. Don't want to have to worry about that catching on fire. So this has been on the ground now for a while. And I think it's still dropping, and I think it's safe to say that the floor is definitely below freezing. I'm sure this would keep dropping if I allowed it to. Yeah, it's about to hit the freezing mark. While it's nice and comfy up here. You know, I did also expect that. That's why I'm, I'm wearing double socks, just so my feet wouldn't get numb just from being on the floor. You know, something that someone said in the comments of my first camp video in this place, this is actually a very cool idea. Um, someone said that because there's no engine in this thing, I should use, there's tons of space in the engine bay. I don't think I would know how to do something like this, but someone said maybe I should get a big diesel generator and put it in there and hook it up so it has a big smokestack in the front of it, and you start it with this, replace the whole ignition, so this is how you would start it, and it would probably run off a battery. Just start it up for power, and even use it, because the, the bigger generators, some of them even have radiators on them, you could somehow use the radiator to reclaim the heat, like a vehicle does and actually get the duct work in here working again. I'm not sure how this place was heated. Is it this? Where did the heat come from? I see that, but I don't see where the heat actually came out of. I'd probably just make a new vent or whatever, but... No, I actually like this place being very primitive. No power. It's kind of cool. And plus something like that... Um, that would probably cost so many thousands of dollars to get done, and I, I don't think it's worth it for a place like this that I'm rarely going to be in. Wow, it's getting windy out. Can you hear that? I never even realized this was cracked. This window has a good-sized crack in it. I like having the sunlight. I hope I don't ever have to cover that thing up. But anyways, that that diesel generator idea that 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 brought back some memories. I remember years ago, my when I was a kid, the place shut down when I was like sixteen or so. My grandfather had a friend who owned a campground in Maine, and it was at the end of a ten mile long road, and it would have cost too much to get electricity down there with power lines. Plus, in the middle of nowhere. Any little storm would knock down trees and probably put the power out. The guy had a solar field for his house. He lived there year-round. And he just used snowmobiles to get to town during that time of year. And in the summertime, he had two giant diesel generators to run the campground. Typically, only one of them ran. And the other one was more auxiliary. And if the other one broke down, I guess. 
that that diesel generator was really cool. It sounded like a tractor trailer when it would start up. Because diesel prices were high, the guy only ran it. The campground only had power a couple hours in the morning and a couple hours at night just to keep refrigeration going. And during those hours is when you would charge up your stuff. And that was really cool when that thing would start up. But the unfortunate part about that whole campground situation was the guy owned it for like 30 years. It had cabins, hundreds of plots for camping or RVs, all hookups everywhere. The guy spent 30 years begging the logging company to buy it, to buy the land, which was being leased. After 30 years, they finally said yes. It cost well over a million dollars then. A couple years later, the guy got too sick or something and couldn't operate the campground anymore. The kids didn't want it, so it's sitting abandoned now in the middle of nowhere. For some reason, it was only on the market for like a month trying to sell it. And ever since, it's been abandoned. Anytime I've ever been near it on those logging roads, they don't plow it. There's no tracks going down there at all. It's kind of sad. Thermometer has been on the floor an hour, and I think that's the coldest it's going to get. It's reading about 29. All right, I got everything cleaned up and back in the truck. Um, yeah, the bottom of that door is not going to shut. All right, I got the stuff in here really fast. only took about 10 minutes. The lumber wasn't a problem. We w Remember, we weren't supposed to get any snow, but we got that coating... Thankfully, it's so cold that it's fluffy. You just stand it up, it all comes off like nothing. And it, I guess it's really not that bad. We don't have too much stuff in here. I just didn't put it away neat last time. Now it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's so cold out. If you touch anything metal with bare hands, it transfers the cold to you so fast. It literally feels like you're going to get frostbite after five seconds of touching something. I just went and grabbed these propane cans, brought them right back in. Just holding onto those handles for like five seconds to bring them in. Felt like it was freezing my skin. It basically literally was. And one part of me that wasn't cold was my head. That's why in the winter I'm growing my hair out. I'll shave it off in a month or two. As soon as it starts getting warmer out. So this stove will probably run a few more hours. I'm leaving now. I got everything cleaned up. I just got to take my chargers, tripod... Everything else is going to get left in here. This is still nice and hot. It's nice to just put my hand right here, warm it up a little bit after being outside. It's so bitterly cold. The winds are gusting so strong out there that you pick up a piece of plywood. It makes you just want to fly away. There's so much drifting snow. You know how everything out there when I showed you yesterday was crunchy? It's that inch of snow we got overnight. It's blowing around, whipping around like crazy. You know, days like this, I, I actually love days like this for working in the cold. As long as there's no wind. If it's still, it's really nice. Wind is a killer when it's this cold out. Those mouse traps have scared me so many times. I'll be walking in here and the vibrations will trip one of them and it's loud boom. Despite being in here all night, keeping it warm, it's so cold out, just that little tiny gap between this and the roof, I guess enough air was passing through there that none of the roof melted at all. I can't believe it. I thought we were going to wake up to big ice dams, icicles, possibly leaking into the truck. Absolutely nothing. It was so cold. Next week, we're supposed to get a day that's fairly good above freezing, and I think a lot of this will melt off. This truck, here's the tag from when it was last serviced. I can't read it, but the last time this truck was registered, it says on the license plate was 1991. And I have not seen a Texaco station ever up around this area. It must be very old. I just swept up the floor. Most of that is ice and snow pellets. Last time we were out here, that would have melted. Today, the floor is so cold, none of the snow is melting, so I'm just going to sweep it right out the door as if it's dirt. All right, this is how we're leaving the fire. 
make sure it's latched really good. All right, heading out. All right, and like magic, this door isn't sticking anymore this morning. I don't know why. All right, we're all done. And uh, yes, like someone said, you see right here, it looks like somebody at one point used to have a lock, but they removed it. I want to put another kind of lock on here, but I want to get a really heavy duty one that would be very difficult to cut. All right, we're out. All righty, I just got in the car. I love the crunchy snow. Let's start this thing, see how badly it starts in this weather. Not that bad, but it hesitated a little bit. It's not negative one outside like it says. It'll show the real temperature once we get moving. Next warm day, the oil has to be changed. I usually change the oil around every 10,000 miles. 5,000 if I do a lot of idling or slow driving, but most of my driving is highway travel and I put like 5,000 on a month. So don't do it as often. That light right there, no matter what, turns on after 5,000. I'm gonna let this heat up for like 10 minutes before I even move. I love mornings like this because all the cars make giant steam clouds, especially if you're behind a big rig. The steam clouds are absolutely huge and there's ice all over the sides of the trailers. I think it looks awesome. Or if we drive by a power plant, the steam, it makes massive clouds into the sky. I always wait for the heat gauge on the car to start moving before I turn the heat on or move. Oh, the fan is making a little squeaking sound that I'll just turn the heat on. All right, listen to the car moving. It's gonna sound so awesome squeaking. Let me shut the heat back off so you can hear perfectly. love that squeaking sound. Snow is pretty deep that I'm driving in. That's why it sounds like that. Ah, uh, there's a little bit of frost on the windshield, but the wipers were able to get most of it. As soon as we drive and heat up even more, I'm just gonna turn the defogger on and that'll get rid of the rest. I can tell it's gonna take forever for the engine to get up to operating temperature in this cold. Now, because things shrink when they're cold, when I just turn the heat on full blast, I got a big blast of dust from when I go off-road because it's so cold that the fan blade is able to like scrape the inside of the duct work it seems and it scrapes some of it off and it just got a big cloud of dust in here. Well, I hope today's video was interesting everyone. Thanks for watching and have a great day. On these cold mornings, I love driving up this steep hill on my road because it gets the engine fully heated just driving up it. That is hilarious. The engine was fully heated going up the hill. Now that I'm going back down and not revving it, the engine temperature's dropping again. Wow, I had to stop to show you this. You see that giant cloud in the sky? It's being created by this. The wood-burning power plant. We're in Rumford Falls, Maine. And you can also see the waterfall right there making all that mist right next to that bridge. I had to pull over and take a look at this because I don't know if we're going to get another good view of this. Anytime I drive by here, that wood-burning power plant is making big plumes of smoke. But this time, it's mixed with so much steam. Look at that cloud. Wow, this does look really awesome. We're now approaching that bridge I just showed you. Look at all the steam coming off of the waterfall. I wonder how icy this sometimes gets from that. The only other time I've ever seen this was at Niagara Falls. Wow, 
look at these gigantic clouds it's making the power plant. If it wasn't for this, we would have clear blue skies at the moment. Take a look at them dumping out this big rig trailer. Got the bulldozer down there spreading out the wood chips. So a lot of the steam is coming from the wood chips like a big compost pile. Here's a log truck. There's a lot of logging activity today because in the winter they're more active since the machinery won't sink into the swamps. Everything's frozen. It's much easier to log. The only downside is the cold. Wow, the steam coming out of these trucks is awesome. 